lots being locked. I don't know. Good evening. <laughs> Take three. Welcome to Love Life. But this is the third time we, we, we got bumped off twice before. So let's hope, let's hope that we stay on this time. It's great to be with you this evening for this first edition of our new season of Love Life. Um, many of you would have heard us prior to this on radio, and uh, we are so glad to have this occasion to meet with you live on Facebook. And we promise that this new season of Love Life is really going to be interesting. It's really going to be inspiring. Um, a bit later, we'll be, we'll be starting our YouTube channel, so um, you'll be able to go back and watch um, editions of our show that we will post on YouTube, but more of that as time goes on. So it's really great to be here with you this evening. Um, the last time some of you would have seen us would have been on Sunday when we shared about the Song of Solomon and some of the beauty of the Song of Solomon. And we promised that we'd be back this evening to further expand on the whole area of intimacy in marriage relationships, intimacy with respect to sex, and uh, we encouraged you uh, on our flyer. Well, I don't think it was on our flyer. I meant for it to be on our flyer, but I think I might have said it in the in the um, in my little captions that you should perhaps put the children to bed because this is going to be a frank discussion tonight as we get down into the um, we get deep down into a discussion looking at the beauty of sexual intimacy and intimacy on the whole in marriage and obviously you can't discuss intimacy in marriage without looking at sexual intimacy um, we know that we're still on semi lockdown in barbados a lot of barbados has opened up but on evenings we're still um, on curfew from 8 p.m to 5 a.m so i trust everyone is inside and you are locked in and locked on to this show we um encourage you to share it with your friends let them know that we are online on facebook live share it on your page so others can join in start a watch party so that others can connect with us and we can all um take part in this very interesting discussion this evening we want that if there are any questions you're you're going to have or any thoughts you have about but what we're going to be talking about this evening that you can you know jot them down in the comment section and we are we'll try our best to answer them and to to even if we don't get to answer them this evening perhaps we might get to answer them in another episode of our show so love life is brought to you with the compliments of better blends relationship institute in case there's anyone logging in for the first time and you've never seen me before my name is denise charles my husband gabriel he's going to be joining us in just a few minutes we are the founders of better blends relationship institute blending lives transforming community communities better blends is a registered charity in barbados and we um specialize in counseling couples um, counseling singles, doing workshops, seminars, we speak at conferences, we share about love, about sex, about marriage, about personal development, about um, the development of the entire person, not just in the context of relationships, but also in the context of whole life development. And that, that's what we are all about. We've been around since 2008. And we're really pleased to have this opportunity to share with you this evening. I'm going to invite my husband, Gabriel, to come on in to the space with us. And this evening, we are going to be talking about intimacy. We are uncovering intimacy this evening. We know that um, society has come a fairly long way. The church has come a fairly long way. <laughs> That's Gabriel, my husband. Good evening. For those who might not have seen him before. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. He's going to be weighing in as well because I love to have the balanced perspective. Although we are married and we share a lot, I'm sure as a male, he is going to see some things differently than I would. And I would be able to bring a different type of perspective from him as well. So we, we, we love to have that, um, that connection in terms of how we talk about the various things that we're going to be speaking about. Um, so even though we've come a long way as a society, we know that there's still a lot of taboo around this whole notion of sexual intimacy and um, intimacy on the whole and the role that intimacy should play in a marriage relationship. There is also a lot of taboo about it, even still in church circles, among many Christians who still have a little bit of a challenge in terms of 
um, talking about sex, really talking about it, um, talking about um, the things that they may be uncomfortable with. And I mean talking about it even with their own partner, you know, I don't, I'm not necessarily talking about getting out there on a platform or getting out there in a public forum and letting everybody know everything that's going on in your bedroom. That's not what I mean. But I'm saying there are basic general things that we should be able to discuss as adults about sex because if you notice, I know if you have, if you have noticed or if you haven't noticed, the Bible has some fairly graphic verses when it comes to sex, especially in the Song of Solomon. And um, the fact that the Bible is so frank in talking about sex should let us know that God is not ashamed of the thing that he created. Sure. Because this was not invented by the man who invented Playboy. I think he's dead now, Hugh Hefner, right? This was not invented by him. This was not invented by Hollywood. This was invented by God himself. So there's sure. absolutely nothing dirty nothing. or bad or wrong with the discussion of sex with the embracing of our sexuality and the enjoyment of our sexuality. Of course, God has created boundaries and perimeters for us to understand and enjoy and engage in it. Man has a free will. God has given man free will. So we know not everyone will necessarily um, stay true to what God has laid down. Um, but at the end of the day, everyone still deserves to learn about sex because we believe in sexual best practices at Better Blends. Yeah. In the same way that there are best practices with respect to um, preparing yourself for the job market. You know, there are best practices with respect to um, crafting your CV so that it's impressive when you send it for a job interview. Um, there are best practices with respect to how you manage an organization. Mm -hmm. There are best practices with respect to how you lead teams and how you encourage your work colleagues to to cooperate and collaborate. There are best practices in every facet of life. There are best practices with respect to eating and dieting. There are best practices with respect to keeping yourself fit. There are best practices with respect to everything. So there are best practices with respect to sex. That's right. There's a lot of sex happening in our society. Graphic images of sex and references to sex are everywhere. They're in the music that we listen to. They're in the movies that we watch. Um, you know, they're in advertisements. References to sex cannot be avoided. They're just out there. And um, references to sex would suggest that we have a comfort with sex. But what I would say is that we have a comfort perhaps at the social level with expression, certain expressions of sexuality. But when it comes to really honing in and zeroing in on what sex was created for, that is to bind a committed or a covenanted man and woman together yeah. and to cement that relationship and to ensure that that relationship is preserved from all the ills and all the evils that are out there that may threaten it. Um, we don't get into that type of discussion where sex is concerned, even where married couples are concerned. I've sat with married couples and I know that some married couples or even individuals who are married on their own, because I've also sat in counseling with individuals, women on their own, who are uncomfortable with their own sexuality. Mm -hmm. they, they have difficulties telling their spouse what they like or what they don't like. Um, things have happened to them in their past that they haven't come to terms with, and as a result, um, they don't enjoy sex. They put up with it. They grin and bear, as opposed to letting loose themselves and really celebrating the act of sex. So we're really about discussing intimacy in its broad sense but also discussing it with respect to sexual intimacy because i don't want us to think that there is intimacy and then there's sexual intimacy in yeah. marriage i want us to understand that sex that intimacy in marriage must be defined by sexual intimacy you can tell somebody else that i said that intimacy is complete intimacy is complete but with respect to marriage intimacy must be defined by sexual intimacy you, you might right. ask me well what about people who can't have sex what about people who what about a man who can't have an erection or he can't keep one um what about a couple who one of them is very very ill and therefore they cannot have regular sex i understand that there will be exceptions don't get me wrong but at the end of the day sexual expression and sexual intimacy does not always need to be defined by penetrative sex so if, for example, a man cannot sustain an erection because he has some medical challenge that cannot be fixed, although medical science is of such today that most of these issues 
can be helped. They can be, they can be fixed. They can be adjusted by medication, by some medical procedure, etc. No one is helpless. Very few people are helpless these days in that department, right? There are many things out there to help individuals, but what I'm saying is sexuality is in a marriage relationship does not always have to be defined by penetrative sex, but by sexual behavior, by sexualized behavior, because there must be something that distinguishes that marriage relationship from all other types of relationships, right? It's, it can't be a platonic friendship. You're not living in the house with your roommate if you're married. You know, there's something that must define this relationship that is different from others. But I am getting ahead of myself. You are. <laughs> <laughs> this evening, I, I think on the flyer, what we said was we're going to be looking at the essence of intimacy. Yes. We are going to be looking at, what's the second one? It was the essence. It was the, the issues, the essence, the issues, and the joys. The, joy. the essence, the issues, and the joys. I don't know if we're going to get to cover all of those tonight. But when we think of intimacy, I want you to, to think long and hard about it. What do you, what comes to your mind when you think of intimacy? What comes to your mind? I know if you're going to be speaking to me, I can't necessarily hear you. You might be saying it right there in your home, but I need you to put it down in the chat. Mm -hmm. uh, but we we'll read it. And we, you know, what, what, what comes to your mind, Gary, but when you think of intimacy? When I think of intimacy, I think of, well, it's amazing that some people have the word um, separated yeah. in to, to me see. Yeah, some people do right? that. Yeah. But I think it is connectivity. It is it is mm -hmm. it is not just a physical thing, mm -hmm. but it is something that is also emotional, it is something spiritual. Mm -hmm. It is it is something that is wonderful. You know, intimacy is it is it is I see it as completeness in a relationship. Okay. Right. right. You, you call some really great words just now. Completeness. Um, I know there's one favorite word that you like. I didn't hear it just now, but I know there's one you like a lot. Vulnerability. 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 Yeah, so right. intimacy involves vulnerability. Yeah. It is about deep knowledge and yeah. awareness. Yeah. Um, it is about deep understanding and, and compassionate understanding. Knowledge. Yes, knowledge. Yeah. Knowing, knowing, knowing each other. Each other. Um, yeah. It's about oneness and connection, as you said. Yeah. Uh, uh, deep love, um, admiration, mutual commitment. These are some of the words These that I wrote words, down. Yeah. You know, when I thought about intimacy for myself. Okay. And this is about, in a very general way, in terms of a marriage relationship. And... I think if we had to ask any married couple what they desired most in their relationship, I am sure many of them would say that they desire intimacy. intimacy. They want to be intimate with their partner. They want to know. Because each of us, we've been created with that void within us that craves love. Right? We crave love. We crave special attention. Mm -hmm. We want to know that we are needed. We want to know that we are desired. And when we get married to someone because we love them, we want to know that that love, that, that, that feeling of of connection and connectivity that that can be sustained in the relationship yeah. right but th there's one thing i want us to note right it's very very important i think i took a note of it intimacy is not something that is automatic all right it is not automatic it is something that we need to pursue right we have to pursue intimacy we have to make intimacy our goal, we have to, to be intentional about intimacy. Deliberate. Deliberate. We can't assume, oh, we're married, therefore we are going to be intimate. Yeah. Right? Uh, we can't think, oh, we are married, we consummated our marriage, we had sex, or we've been having sex even before we were married, because we know there are some people who do that. You know, we've been intimate sexually, so therefore we are intimate. intimate. Right? We don't want you to just see intimacy in that narrow way. While I do agree that sex plays a great role, a significant role in the establishment and in the, um, in the cultivation of intimacy, intimacy as an entire concept needs to be pursued with a serious level of intentionality. And uh, very often where we go wrong is that I think we pursue sex in search of intimacy. I, I actually was just going to ask you, can... Two persons have sex mm -hmm. without being intimate? That is a big question. I don't know what y'all think. The, the, the reason why I'm asking that question because something was posted 
in the in the on Facebook today, a good mm -hmm. friend of mine okay. asking the question mm -hmm. um, about can you have sex with your friend and still remain just being a friend, oh, just had sex? Oh, wow. That's yeah. a very good question. Yeah. I don't know what y'all guys think about that. <laughs> um, yeah, somebody said um, intimacy is physical, emotional, and spiritual. Yes, there are different dimensions to intimacy. But can you just have sex with someone and not be intimate and not be intimate with them yeah. that is a, a ticklish question you know i think it has two dimensions to it number one i think you can have sex with someone without being holistically intimate with them because strangers have sex not ideal but we know that these things happen and because 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 again Someone could go to a prostitute and have sex. Someone can have whom he, whom he exactly or she does, not, does know. not know. Right. People go out to fetch some parties and have sex with people that they right. met for the right. first right. time. We are not encouraging that. We are not promoting it. It is not right, but people do it. So if you ask the question, can does sex automatically bring intimacy? I would say no. Right. But 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 at the same time, sex sex brings not only um, um, the act of sex, but within the act of sex. There is also the physicality, being emotional, mm -hmm. and as well as being spiritual. I love what you've yeah. said, Gabriel. That is an excellent answer. Because while having sex with someone will not automatically produce total intimacy, right. in the totality of what intimacy is, if you looked at all those words I read out at the beginning, you know, awareness, knowledge, connectivity, understanding, yeah. deep yeah. love and unconditional love and vulnerability and exposure. You won't get all of that from having sex with somebody that you just met. But what having sex with someone does is that it opens your spirit because sex is a spiritual act. It, it is, is not just a penis and a vagina interfacing. Okay? That is what popular culture would have us to believe that when people have sex, oh, stick on a condom and you'll be fine. You know, you'll protect yourself. That's, that's just at the level of the physical. Sex is a, a spiritual imprinting activity. I love that word, imprinting activity. Yes, when you have sex with someone, they become imprinted on your spirit. Because yes. you know why? Because of the DNA of sex. Yes. Sex was designed by God. And he designed it to be spiritual in nature. He designed it that when two people do it, when two individuals in a covenanted relationship do it when two married people do it that what it would do it would seal the deal it would connect them for life it would ratify their vows to each other it would be the the um the physical example of what their joining was actually, actually and that is why we speak about consummation of a marriage gonna, i was just gonna say that right you know, after the wedding there is the, 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 what they look forward to the consummation of the marriage, of the marriage. right so yeah. sex was designed by god for a particular reason yeah. it wasn't just for appropriation it was for the actual melding of two people because the bible says the two shall become one yeah right so that was that is a physical act and a spiritual act so that's how god designed sex that's the DNA. So if you happen to have sex in the wrong context or in the wrong space or with the wrong person, well, it will not um, necessarily bring about total intimacy in all the factors, in all the facets yeah. that I spoke about yeah. earlier. It will open you up to being connected to someone. And that's why sometimes people say you never forget Your the first, first person, person. Yeah. that you had sex with, even years after years after you might fall in love with someone else and you get married to someone therefore, else therefore therefore then when having sex both persons emotionally it is experience yes and, and not only that when you have sex you are actually unless these things are dealt with and and that's why i believe in being open after you have committed to someone i believe in but i'm saying you have the dredge of every single person you slept with but i think you need to be open about what you've done before yeah. and i think you need to bring those to the cases to a resolution mm -hmm. and you need to disconnect mm -hmm. spiritually and emotionally disconnect from everyone you've ever had sex with in case you've had sex with, with other people right but the point i was trying to make was that 
um, having sex will not necessarily produce intimacy, but it, it, is, it is an opening to a spiritual connection mm -hmm. that can happen between two individuals. And sometimes that is why women, particularly because we tend to be more vulnerable spiritually and emotionally, perhaps, I don't know, it may have to do with our makeup, how we are made, um, with, the, the, with the type of hormones that we have. Um, the level of hormones that we have that are different from the hormones that men have. It might have to do with our genetic makeup yeah. in terms of how God made us differently to men. But we know women, generally speaking, there are always exceptions, tend to be more um, connected to men that they have sex with. So a man might have sex with a woman. He didn't mean anything by it. It wasn't anything to him. But the woman begins to feel emotional about him. She emotional begins to feel connected to him. Yeah. He leaves and goes about his business and she wants him to call her the next day or she calls him the next day yeah. because... That act of sex caused her to feel vulnerable and almost owned by this man, right? Okay, so that's one side of it, right? So do we pursue sex in search of intimacy or do we pursue intimacy and one of the outcomes is great sex? Right? Let's ask that question again. Do we pursue sex in search of intimacy or do we pursue intimacy and one of the outcomes of intimacy is great sex? And remember, you can. And I'm not answering that question yet. You, you, you can you can post your your, 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 your questions or your comments, and, and we we'll, we'll try to answer as much yes. as we can. Okay. Um, you know, some people work backwards with respect to sex and their relationship. They have sex first as a result of some chemistry or attraction. So you meet somebody, you feel attracted to them, which will happen. We are, we, we are, man is made up, man meaning man and woman, mankind is made up of chemicals. We, we, we are we're made up of a bundle of chemicals. So you meet people and for some reason you find, you, you feel strangely drawn to them. You feel attracted to them. They, they look good to you and you, yeah. you want to connect with them, right? Um, I'm not saying that every time you feel that you have to pursue that feeling, but that is a part of being a human being. But some people, you know, work backwards and they give in to those feelings. They give in to that attraction and they have sex first, is right? That, is, that, is that as a reason of socialization? Well, knowing, maybe. Knowing, knowing that in, in the past people used to say, I think some people still say it, mm -hmm. I don't want to pay but, in the yes. bag. Yeah. Or whatever. Or yeah. some people just see sex as a recreational activity Recre and, you yeah, know, they just want to have fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not God's design, but we know that people do it. So they have sex with people that they've just met. And then they try to connect with them after. They try to get to know them after. They try yeah. to make a relationship come out of the sexual encounter. There may be a few people that it may work for, but generally speaking, that's not the best idea because what sex does, sex complicates a relationship. And that's why that question that was asked by your friend yeah. about whether you can just have sex with your friend and then return to a platonic relationship, I personally don't think so. Yeah. I think if you tr think you do, you're fooling yourself because right. sex, to my mind, would change the dynamics of any platonic friendship. Yeah. If you have a good friend and they're just your good friend, you happen to have sex with them, that relationship is going to forever be changed. It's going to forever be dif different. And um, you would have to decide how you're going to navigate it or how you're going to negotiate that relationship yeah. from there onward. Definitely. Even if y'all are not boyfriend or girlfriend and you never become boyfriend and girlfriend if you want to maintain that friendship you might have to discuss that and and, and try to bring peace to whatever yeah, happened right. between the two of you uh, maybe investigate why it happened you both may have been vulnerable at the, at the, at the mm -hmm. time and yeah. you know so to me it will forever change the, the, the context of a relationship yeah. and, and for sure if you're married and you have sex with anybody whether it's platonic whether it's somebody you are actively pursuing an affair with um, it was a slip up with somebody you work with or whatever that also can change your life forever not only your marriage forever but your relationship with that person yeah. and therefore if you had sex as a man as a means of a slip up with someone that you didn't intend to have it with then you need to bring resolution to that because that will also affect your relationship or your friendship with that person because yeah. of the nature again the dna of sex and what sex was designed to do. Sex was designed not just to be a penis and a vagina interfacing, but it was designed to be spirit to spirit connection. So it's bodily connection, the two shall become one, is bodily, it's a bodily description of what happens to the actual joining yeah. between a man and a woman, yeah. and it is also a, a description of what happens when the spirit of the man and the woman become joined. Yes. Now when it comes to the, I, and I think that's, that's a pretty, clear picture in terms of describing the essence of, of intimacy and yes, what intimacy so. is supposed to be. 
Intimacy is connection, it is vulnerability, it is deep love, it is knowledge, it is compassionate understanding, it is all of those wonderful emotions that can be experienced in a relationship or should be experienced for sure in a marriage and they, uh, intimacy is ultimately, uh, it is gratified, it is exemplified through the sex act or through sexual expression for those who might think you know not everybody can actually have literal sex you know because they may be ill or whatever it is gratified it is consummated you know through sexual expression because that is what god designed for marriage however there are issues very much there are challenges there are roadblocks to intimacy what I started with is the ideal. That is what should take place in a relationship. Yeah, yeah. But we know we happen. live in the real world. Yeah. It doesn't happen this way. I have counseled couples. And, 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 don't, and don't get me wrong. Sometimes I am talking to, ev to everyone this, this evening. I'm not only talking to church people. I'm not only talking to Christians. I'm not only talking. I'm talking to any and everybody. Right? But I have seen individuals who have been raised in the church. I've seen individuals who kept themselves, who did not get sexually active before marriage and they were married and, and so on. And still they were having a rough time adjusting to the sexual experience, right? There were issues with premature ejaculation. There were issues with the woman not feeling free, not being able to let herself go and enjoy the act, feeling guilty, feeling squeamish feeling as if she was doing something wrong never so having, they never having an orgasm uh, never have an experience an orgasm mm -hmm. not wanting the husband to touch the breasts mm -hmm. um and so on and so forth feeling that the genitals are dirty and that you can only do certain things with the genitals and you can't do any other things because if you do those other things those other things are bad you can only have sex in the dark you can only have sex could in the only dark have it with clothes on you can only have it with clothes on could only have it in a missionary position in the missionary position right <laughs> you know and for those who are wondering how that name got the name Please you know them. it got the name actually from the puritans the puritans who came over to the united states from europe um, they, they used to have sex in that position with the man on top all the time. So that is how it got its name because that was the position they thought was the holy position. You know, and some people still believe that today, that that's the only position you can have sex in with the man on top. You know, the missionary, the biblical, they, they see it somehow as a biblical and there's nothing in the Bible that's, that's it's not in the Bible actually. You know? The bed is undefiled. <laughs> the bed is undefiled, right? But... If we look at the woman in the Song of Solomon, and we started on Sunday, on Sunday when we were looking at yes. the Song of Solomon, mm -hmm. and we we're going to be continuing again Sunday coming, we looked at the Shulamite woman who we described as a beautiful black woman from Lebanon, yes. right? Who, came to who came to Jerusalem, and Solomon was totally enraptured by this woman, yeah. right? And the thing about this woman, I remember Gabriel on Sunday saying that this woman knew who she was. Yeah. She loved herself because right. he mentioned that a part of establishing um, good intimacy, um, because our topic on Sunday was uncovered. And, and today we are continuing with uncovering intimacy, right? They're connected. And he was saying that a good part of her, her ability to you know, be free and to enjoy her sexuality was the fact that she felt comfortable about herself. She, yeah. she spoke she about... Felt comfortable in her skin. Yes, mm -hmm. her skin. She talked about her blackness. She yeah. talked about her beauty, yeah. etc. He didn't only talk about it. She spoke about it. And we, and we went home with that, that um, thought and we said that, you know, as women particularly, we needed to feel good about ourselves. Mm -hmm. We needed to be able to celebrate ourselves so that we could find ourselves in a place where we would really enjoy sex and uh, i was reading something that the shulamite the shulamite woman said the shulamite woman said that's right and she said um in in, in song of solomon 2 his left hand is under, under my, my head, head. Yeah. and his right arm embraces, embraces me, me. Wow. right his left hand is under my head and his right arm embraces me. So she's almost describing 
a sexual position. That's right. You know? And another thing she said in another chapter and verse, 4 verse 16, she said, Awake, come and blow upon my garden. Whoa. I don't know what y'all think that garden that is. is. Powerful. Well, we were talking about that garden. <laughs> that is so. very deep, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Awake and come and blow upon my garden. Yeah. That the spices thereof may flow out. Whoa. I mean, that's pretty graphic. It's very. Let my beloved come into his garden. Mm. So it is her garden, but it's also his garden. The come, two on. Shall be come on. She's talking about her vagina. That's right. It is clear, it is evident. This is poetic language, That's right. right? So awake and come and blow upon my garden that the spices thereof, she's talking about her lubrication. Mm -hmm. The spices thereof, remember I said this was gonna be graphic, so please don't be embarrassed, all right? That the spices thereof may flow out. Let my beloved come into his garden and eat his pleasant fruit. Wow. This is in the Bible. Yes, Cheryl, it's very, very graphic. You know, so I don't know how people can read the Song of Solomon and then... You sure that is not sinful? And then at the other side of their mouths, say that there is something wrong with oral sex or oral expression. You see, the, the point of the matter is the entire body is clean. This body... She, she prepared, she prepared. This body belongs to your husband. And his body belongs to you. And and as I was as I was saying on Sunday, the, we we must understand that as people we must love ourselves. That's right. Hence, if you love yourself, you're going to keep yourself in a way that the other person will learn to appreciate because you appreciate who you are and yes. how you carry your body. That's right. So therefore, the other person will not hesitate yes. in really going after that body that you have carried. That's because right. Because she looked, I mean, when he looked into the field, because she was just a farm girl, mm -hmm. when he looked into the field and he saw her, she she pleased his he desired her. That's right. So the mere fact that he desired her yeah. showed that she took care she of took herself. She took care of herself. She smelled good. She so smelled she came, beautiful. It, it, one, one person said she came from the hills of Lebanon into the halls of Jerusalem. That's right. That's how he draw her into the yeah, world. Yeah. And he was able to, I mean, eat fruit from that, the garden. That's right. Eat fruit from the garden. Yeah. She invited him into her garden. So yeah. her garden... I, became his garden yeah. so your your body belongs to your husband That's your right. vagina is yours and your vagina is his yes his penis is his and it is also yours that's right you know so if you want to have a pet name for it that's fine that's mm -hmm. your business you know and, and you can learn to enjoy each other celebrate each other be hygienic be clean now am i telling people i'm not telling you what to go and do you have the freedom yeah. to celebrate and enjoy each other in your marriage bed that's right right that is what the word is actually saying you must enjoy you in order for somebody else to be able to that enjoy is right you. you have to trust yeah. you know in your own beauty yes in what god has blessed you with if god has given you some wonderful breasts ladies celebrate your breasts that's right if god has given you some wonderful hips celebrate your hips you know um none of us has a perfect body but very few of us do there may be a few of you who have perfect bodies i certainly don't but i know what my assets are and i appreciate my assets you right? know what she said <laughs> i appreciate what my assets are yeah. you know i i don't have perfect a perfect body there there i would like to lose some weight in some places and you know expand some other areas you know but you have to appreciate you you have to celebrate you you have to take care of you and invite your spouse into that space so your spouse can celebrate you you know what she also spoke about her husband her man she said my beloved is mine yeah. and i am his so you see that reciprocity going on there yes. it is not one-sided so it's not about a man deciding or oh, i can do whatever i want to do with you and you gotta take it it's not that's not the type of spirit that should govern a marriage relationship number one you shouldn't be doing anything with your spouse that they're uncomfortable with so 
that grace and that compassion also has to be a part of the intimate I hope we're not relationship. Running, we're running ahead of ourselves. No, I don't think so. We're still talking about the issues. Oh, yes, right? that's we're right. talking that's about right. the issues. Right. And yeah. one of the biggest issues is that need to feel comfortable. Yes. Needing to feel comfortable with yourself. That's needing right. to love yourself. In order for, for your husband to be comfortable or your man to be comfortable with you, you, you must have to be, be comfortable, comfortable with, with yourself. yourself. That's right. Right? I just want to read this other thing. And she said, um, like and uh, how, how how handsome you are my beloved so she was complimenting him yeah. how handsome you are my beloved like an apple tree among the trees of the forest so is my beloved among the young men wow. so she was saying among all the men that there are you are the most handsome She's single though you this look man. good then yes. you look good yes. i like how you look and ladies those are the things you need to be telling so, your husband so therefore therefore there is there isn't anything wrong mm -hmm. to pursue the one you want to be in love with there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing right? wrong with that because he pursued her and she pursued him she recognized yes. that this man i mean his head and shoulders above all that's right. all the ones that i am looking at hey they, they are not they are not comparable to him that's right yeah. so complimenting your man yeah and obviously the reciprocal is understood even though it's not there but he, he complimented yeah, he her because he, complimented her, he yes. spoke about her breasts yes. and, and all of that and, 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 and that, yeah, that type yeah. of thing you know he yeah. he complimented and, and parts of her and, body and, yeah. oh yes so you know there's a lot of women's lib talk sometimes that creeps into relationships a lot of um feminism and i don't uh, you know, I, I describe myself as a womanist. I believe in womanhood. I believe in the power of womanhood. I'm not a feminist, but I believe in womanhood. I believe that women have a particular role to play. I believe we must celebrate who we are as women. Women must support each other, be strong, celebrate each other. But I also have no issue with submitting to my husband. I have no issue with being under my husband's covering. I don't see that. That, that makes me of le less than a woman. I am a very strong, independent woman. Very, very strong. I'm not a weak person. But I also know when to lean. I know when to lean on my husband. And I love leaning on my husband. He knows that. You know, so even though people might see me in a particular context, and um, people assume that I am a particular way, my husband knows the full me. And he knows that I love to lean on him as well. And that I am not strong in every area. And I, de I depend on his strengths. And that is very sexy to a man. When a woman knows how, it's not that you're making yourself weak or that you're pretending, but what you're doing in expressing your need of your man, you are making him feel needed. You're making him feel strong. You're making him feel like a king. And that is a great turn on for a man. A yeah. man needs yeah. to feel validated. Yeah. Yes. A man so. needs to feel as if he's strong. He needs to feel like a king. Uh, a man doesn't need a woman who's going to feel that she can do everything and she doesn't need him. You know, and it mustn't be something that you pretend and put on. It has to be real. You know, I am strong, but I'm not strong in everything. And I don't wish to be strong in everything. I always tell my husband, I wouldn't like to be married to me. I'm very thankful that he's <laughs> different to I am, to, to who I am, because I love that difference. I love the fact that we are a couple. We are very similar in many ways. We have very similar but interests, but we are very, also very different. very different. And I appreciate those differences. Those differences add value to our relationship. The fact that my husband is the type of person that he is, it adds value to me, mm -hmm. and it makes me a better woman. And I would believe it is like that with him, That's you right. know, vice versa. That's right. Right? So what I'm saying is that... A I, I think, I, I, I think the, the, the mere fact that, that in, I, don't, I don't believe in compatibility to that level, because the mere fact that she is different to me is what attracts me to her that's right right so therefore if she as she's saying if she was just like me Kadima, i wouldn't want her to be with me i like what dr anthony I'll Cummins do. is saying he's saying in fact you are strengthening yourself by strengthening your mind excellent yes, that's an that's excellent right. point that's right. That's right? right you're strengthening yourself right by strengthening your mind and yes. that is very very true you know and that's how and, we and need we to love, see we love, we love that relationships as being complementary yeah, yeah. we are not in competition with each other we're not trying to outdo each other we are not competing and trying to oh i'm better than him no me i'm not competing with him. i support everything that my husband does i support the things that he does he supports me i mean one thousand mm percent -hmm. i tell people i would not have been able to accomplish all that i have have done if i didn't have the type of supportive man that i have you know, I really laud him for his, how he honors me and how he supports me in everything that I do. 
and um, he pushes me. You know, he puts me out there. He, you know, he promotes me, and he doesn't. He doesn't feel less than a man because he does it. You know, because, because I believe in myself. Yes. The mere fact that I believe in myself, and I, I, I am strong in who I am. Mm -hmm. I am able to, 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 to compliment. I'm able to push. I'm able to, to, to reassure my my spouse that she is who she is, and and wherever I can push her into being further, I want to do that because I believe in who I am. Right. You know, I am not going to see anything she does as belittling myself. And I think that's a problem a lot of men carry. They, 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 they think that if their wives, their spouses um, are, are better in, in, in some areas, it makes them feel small. No, it does not. Mm -hmm. Because what it does, it adds to the relationship. That's right. And they must understand that. We as men must understand yeah, that, that it can value. only add mm -hmm. value to our relationship. That's right. Yeah. And to yourself. Yeah, and to well. yourself as that's well. That's right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. You know, so all of this is a part of intimacy, you know. When we were talking about some of the roadblocks, some of the things that stop couples from really experiencing true intimacy and from really being able to celebrate their sexual intimacy. Mm -hmm. So we talked about being comfortable with the self, being able to compliment each other, knowing who you are, knowing your body, understanding yeah. your body, understanding what you want. As we saw the Shulamite, the, the Shulamite, Shulamite woman, woman, she was, you see, I can't even get that word called. <laughs> she was able to express what she wanted. She was able to invite her um, husband into her space. She offered him her garden. She told him, this was your garden. This is my garden. It is your garden. Enjoy, etc. Actually, honey, you know, the, the, the thing about Solomon and a lot of people, you know, they would often say, and, and, and those are the persons who really want to, Hold on to the negative. They would say, "Oh, Solomon had um, seven seven hundred wives and and three hundred concubines. You know, so who am I if I have two women?" He was not supposed to do that. No, he wasn't. Because the, 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 he, he was told that he must not go and join himself to the Hittites, the Pezzarites, all these different ites, all, these different ites. all these other women. He should not join himself to them because as he does that, he will fall into their idol worship which is and, what happened and which is what took place in his life that's right so 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 even in his old age when he saw the shulamite woman mm -hmm. that that would have that would have spoken to his heart and i think that would have driven him back to to understanding what marriage really is yes and as a result that's how he was able to pen because no he was the wisest man and yet still he did a dumb thing like that Having 700 wives and 300 concubines, that was done in the sight of God. Yeah. And as a result, he, 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 he had to pay for it. That's right. And, and, and I'm saying it took, it took a young woman to really make him understand that, listen, this marriage is something that ought to be this way and this way only. Yeah? Yes. And that's why he penned it so that we can see. So, so those persons might want to attribute it to, 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 to Christ and the church, however... And yeah, that is fine, but the essence of Song of Solomon is how he related to the woman. That's how right. How he re related in the relationship. That's yeah. right. And, and it, it is really God setting a blueprint for us in, in terms of understanding the beauty and the power of sexual love. Yes. That is, this is nothing to be ashamed about. Our bodies are not dirty. No. And uh, really and truly, this is something that we all often teach that. When you are worshiping God in spirit and in truth and you're married, a part of that worship must be the act of sex. The act of sex is actually an act of worship. You know, we, we must relanguage it. It is not something dirty. Mm -hmm. I remember when I wrote my book, How to Have Mind-Blowing Sex Without Losing Your Brain, I was invited by a Christian sister on her program, radio program, to talk about it. And she said in her introduction of me on radio, Denise, you are a naughty girl. You know, she said it kind of tongue-in-cheek. I understood she was making sport. But she said, you are a naughty girl. You are, you are talking naughty things. And I said, no, I'm a very good girl. You know, I'm talking good things. Because this is the, 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 um, the language of the world. The, the, the world speaks about sex in, in dirty terms. You know, you, talk, you hear about saying, people talking about they're going to talk dirty. Um, they're doing nasty things. And um, this is seen as being sexy. 
to say dirty and nasty when it comes to sex. Because that is something that the enemy has tried to propagate. He's tried to portray sex. He's actually selling a bastardization of sex in terms of what God really intended. Because God intended that sex would be just beautiful, holy, wonderful, um, covenantal, and totally exploratory and explosive between a husband and a wife. You know, nothing to be ashamed about. Um, but obviously because of sin, because yeah. we are living in a sin-cursed mm -hmm. earth yeah, and we sorry. are, you know, sex has become, mm -hmm. not that it has become dirty because it's not dirty, but what we have seen people do is that people have misrepresented what it was really meant to be. And we have to live with that reality because sin is still in the earth. But that does not mean we don't teach what sex was intended to be. And we hope to bring people into a better understanding of what sex is to be. And even within the context of marriage, you know, I don't seek to suggest that because two people are married, that that rubber stamps um, everything and that they will have a perfect sex life and no. a perfect love life because no. that does not no. happen either. No. You, you have know, to navigate. People have to navigate. Right? People have to go through their journeys. People no. have to learn each other's bodies. There are people who might have been sexually experienced. You might have had lots of sex with other people. You might have had a little bit of sex with other people. You might have had no sex at all. So people come into marriage with different levels of experience. Mm -hmm. And sometimes a man, because he's had sex with other women and he might have been able to bring them to orgasm in a particular way, he marries this woman or he's, he gets into a relationship with this other woman and he expects that what he did with woman A will work with woman B and C. Yeah. But no, the Bible says a husband is to dwell with his wife according, according to, knowledge. to knowledge. Forget what you learned or forget yeah. what you knew or what you think you, you have know. a new slate. Exactly. Yeah. And ask God to wipe everything clean yeah. from that old slate yeah. and learn anew, learn yeah. afresh. You don't yeah. have to learn this woman's body, this wife, your wife's body. You have to learn her body. You have to understand what pleases her, what arouses her. You know, don't see all women, don't cast all women in the same light and think because you fondled your former spouse's breast that your current spouse will like that. You know, it doesn't necessarily work that way. Let's let's see what um, Dr. Cummings is, is here saying. She said, I challenge every woman out here to go to their man and hold him like, like who, hold him like you would hold a crate of eggs <laughs> and look him in the eyes like he did something and tell him how handsome he is, how much his muscles are, how much his muscles are getting big. Tell him <laughs> how much he turns you on yes. when he smiles. Yes. I guarantee you you will return her and testify that your relationship get closer. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's very true. Yes, yes. You know, there's there's nothing like the power of affirmation and yeah. it goes both ways. It is not just what men should say to their wives. You know, we women, we like a lot of compliments. We love to know that we look good and that we've done the thing, you know, we've done our face, we've done our hair, we put on the special clothes and we come out and we want to make a, we want to make a statement. We love to know that our husband notices and that he says, oh, you look good, you look beautiful, you smell wonderful, you know. We, we, we are, we like to see him look at us. I love to see my husband look at me. And anytime you in do, a particular way. Anytime you don't do those things, the women recognizes this. Yes, we recognize it. We call you out on it sometimes, yeah. or even if we don't, we hold, we hold it in our hearts and yeah. we vex. Yeah. because you didn't give us what we wanted that compliment, yeah. that's right but men also need to be complimented ladies yes men need to be told that they look good mm -hmm. now you might say but he ain't look good <laughs> 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 he don't know how to dress but that's a part of what that's where you come in yes right that's where you come in ladies make sure your husband looks good Y'all are going out tonight. Y'all are going out. I'm sorry. Y'all are going out on a night on the town. Y'all are going to a wedding. You've been invited out to a dinner. You've been invited out to a party. You're going to church. Buy him something new. You know, lay out his clothes for him. Say, honey, okay, I'm going to press the outfit that I want you to wear. Or I want us to wear complimentary colors. Yes. You don't have to be matchy-matchy, but I want us to wear something that would complement each other. So I know what I'm wearing, so I'm going to get you something that would complement you and will we'll compliment what we're going to wear and, and, and pick up your man that's you know right, that's right. And, and when he makes an effort let him know that that you recognize it and that he looks good and it's not only about complimenting him when he looks good also compliment him when he makes love and it's good 
you know, that. I can assure you will put a smile on any man's face oh, and yes. he will clean the house from lava to stava. He can dig up the yard outside and carry out the garbage. I mean, he's just going to be Superman with his cape His on. muscles are going to swell <laughs> Because you're going to make him feel that he, he's being affirmed in the area that he values the most. And men value their sexuality. Yes. Their value being their 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 value feeling like studs. I mean, yeah, we, 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 we criticize them for it, but that's what they value. You know, they have this extra dose of testosterone, so they feel good, you know, that they threw it down in the bed, etc. So make him feel as if, you know, he's been doing a good job. You know, if he's not doing a good job and you don't like it and you are not being pleased by it, let him know that as well. But don't do it in a way that makes him feel small. Yeah. Don't tell him, um, don't insult him. Don't tell him it in a way that makes him feel, that would make him run into the arms of another woman or would make him feel ashamed of himself. You know, there are ways that you can do these things. You wouldn't want him to make you feel bad. You wouldn't want to make, you, do, you wouldn't want him to make you feel as if you don't know what you're doing in bed either. So even if you're not pleased with what your husband is doing, there's a way to let him know. Gentlemen, there's a way to let your wife know. Because ultimately, if you're being controlled by love, if you're being driven by this unconditional love, it's going to influence how you talk to your partner anyhow. Mm -hmm. But we know that there are issues yes, with yes. respect to intimacy. So let's get back to these issues. Again, we, 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 we are coming to you from our home because we are on lockdown. <laughs> so we just want to know Better Blends Relation, Relationship Institute is the home of Gabriel and Denise. That's right. Okay, That's so right. we just want you to know that you're with us and we're glad to know that you're tuning in. And tonight our topic again is... Unco Intimacy uncovered. uncovered. Intimacy yeah. uncovered, right. So we, we, we more or less painted a picture of what intimacy was, inclusive of general intimacy and sexual intimacy. And we're already looking at some of the issues and we talked about the need to, to love the self, the need to be able to affirm the self, mm -hmm. the need to feel positive about one's sexuality, to feel positive about one's body, yeah. about one's sexual organs, et cetera, et cetera. And to understand them, to understand what brings you pleasure, to understand what you don't like. And while it might sound trite to say these things, oh yeah, it's hard for you to say so you don't know what I went through. The other side of this coin is my awareness and my understanding and from my own personal experience that many of us have gone through traumatic things yeah. many of us have experienced abuse from our childhood um, some level of abuse um, maybe a family member touched us inappropriately um, some of us were exposed to things that we should not have seen some of us developed negative ideas about sex and sexuality some of us felt our bodies were dirty that our bodies were wrong, that our feelings were wrong, our sexual desires were wrong. Some of us were taught bad things by the church, or some of us were not taught by the church, and therefore we were left to assume certain things. Sometimes older children abuse us as well, because that mm. is also abuse. You might be nine, and if a 16-year-old, or 18-year-old, or 17-year-old, or 15-year-old, or 14-year-old trouble you, that's abuse as well. Yeah. So some of us experience all types of abuse coming up, and as a result, we had a warped image of our, of our sex, of our sexuality. Some of us may have been exposed to pornography. Some of us may have been raped. There are a number of things that can happen to us. Some of us might have had bad relationships where an individual um, sought to control us, sought mm -hmm. to manipulate mm -hmm. us, sought mm -hmm. to, to use sex against us to control us as well. So some of us had really bad or really negative experiences. And as a consequence, we enter marriage with a lot of this baggage, some of it which is not, um, it is not exposed prior to the relationship, it is not discussed, there is no premarital counseling, or even if it is, it is just at the surface, and it doesn't really tackle these issues, it doesn't get down deep into unearthing these things. But then years into the marriage, or even early into the marriage, we find that while we understand in our heads that sex is expected and sex is okay and, and so on. We understand that in our heads, but in terms of working it out with our bodies, we find that there's a disconnect. And even though we want to in our heads, we want to let go, we want to enjoy the sex act, we are finding that we can't do it because 
our emotions are locked into the past. Actually, you know, no, like you and this is very common. Okay. You you mentioned the different things that, mm -hmm. that you go through, and and more so, young women. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I want to look at men as well. Oh please, you know? please. No, we 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 have been socialized in a way that that have caused abuse to come to us. That's you know? right. I, I came up in a home where I saw a lot of abuse. My mother was, was being beaten by, by, by my stepfather. And, and I mean, even I myself got some of the same lashes that she got, you know. So as a result of all of that, you know, you would come up as a young man believing, well, hey, women are less of vessels. That's so right. therefore, you must beat them as well. Mm -hmm. And so much so that we even hear of, of men just lining at the rum shop. Mm -hmm. And when they come home, the first thing they do is just hold the woman and start to beat the woman. Yeah. It's because it is psychological. Yeah. This is what that they, they were programmed with in and, 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 and their younger age. And now that they have come up, they, they didn't expect to have a woman in their life and not do the same thing. That's right. So as a result, they do the same thing. And that is only one side, and of, the, only one side, of, one side of the issues that men face. Yeah. Men also face abuse. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Because a lot of men, uh, listen, I mean sexual abuse. A lot of that men, yeah. their first sexual experience is with an older woman. Older woman. They're eight years old and they have some 16-year-old or 20-year-old. They're 12 years old and some 25 year old woman. 14 year old. 14 years old and some 30 year old woman. Yes. You know, breaks them in, as they were saying in the old time days, you know, breaks them into sex. Yeah. Sometimes it is arranged by the father. Sometimes it's arranged by the older brother. Yes. Who say you gotta become a man. Mm -hmm. Depending on the kind of society or the kind of home or village culture, that you're culture you come up in. Mm -hmm. This doesn't happen everywhere, but I know it happens. Yes. I, I, I know it happens. And because it, it is something that's almost accepted in our society, yes. we do not see it as abuse. So many times we would see a younger girl and we would think of her being abused or taken advantage of by an older man. But when it comes to a boy being taken advantage of by an older woman, you know, we, that, we see, that is seen as a, in a positive yeah. light because yeah. he's, manish. he's being made a man. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I, I remember as a teacher year, years gone by um, knowing of something like this where a young boy... And his father, I think his father used to let women, all the women sleep with him. Something along those lines took place in his life. And it was like, if it was no big deal to yeah, the father, yeah, yeah. you know, because the father expected that this is what would have made him a man. Yeah. And therefore it was okay for this teenage boy to be having sex. And that is abuse. It is abusive behavior. Yeah. It is abuse. And this affects men when they become full men now. Yeah. They, they have challenges navigating relationships. They have challenges dealing with women because they are still trapped into the past in terms of the things that happened to them that they have not even be, been able to articulate as abuse. And abuse can also happen with same-sex relationships where men who are gay abuse boys. Mm -hmm. The boys are not gay. The boys don't plan to be gay, but they are abused by men. And it can confuse them. Yes. It can confuse them and make some of them think they're gay or even if they go in the heterosexual relationship, they find that they feel conflicted yeah. because they were exposed to something that should not have happened to them. So they're all kind and these things become deep, dark, hidden secrets yes, in our marriages. In our and uh, as a consequence, we are not able to express and experience this sexual intimacy that we should because we have these things in our closet, we have these skeletons in our closet. So when people talk about the secrets, I remember years ago when I started my, my relationship blog, and I still have lots of articles on my relationship blog. I don't get to blog as often as I used to, but the blog is still very much there. The articles are still being shared. Uh, and, and so if you're interested in finding out so much more about a, a lot of the stuff I would have written about with relationships, you can still log on to Red Red Apples, redredapples.wordpress.com. You'll find lots of my articles there. But I wrote an article called The Secrets, Should We Tell All? And people had varying reactions to that article. That's interesting. You know, and the article emerged out of an experience that I had where I was counseling someone and they were asking me if I thought they should tell with respect to an act of sex that they had done. It, well, you know, it was kind of like, you know, being unfaithful to their partner. They were not yet not married, but, you know, they, they wanted to know if they should tell all. And that led me to write this article. And you had varying reactions. Some people said, no, 
what people don't know can't hurt them yes, that's right. you know and, and so on if, if if you know you don't want to start something that then will, will escalate and be blown out of proportion it could possibly end the relationship yeah. and some people said no i believe that you should tell you know you should tell now i really think that I'm not saying that every single thing that happened to you, because you might not even remember every single thing that happened to you. I don't think your telling of what happened to you should be a burden. I don't think it should be something that you should feel compelled to do. Yeah. But I think that when you and your partner become close and you become locked into each other and this becomes your best friend, you know that he has your back. You know that she has your back. A part of that will be a natural desire to share with each other. I remember when my husband and I, I was just, I was young. We started when I was young. I was at school. And uh, I remember um, he was the first person that I told that I had experienced abuse as a, as a child at eight. He was the very first person that I told. I hadn't told my mother at that point, but I told him. We didn't explore it, you know. We were young. I was young, but he was older than I was. But still, it wasn't something that was up for exploration. But I can't remember what led me to tell him, but I told him. I thought it was something he should know. But years down the road in our marriage, when I was a bit, would have been in probably my mid-20s, late-20s, early-30s, you know, that began, that whole That's set true. of things that happened to me as a child began to rear its head. And it, it, it happened to me when I began to really pursue God and really began to, to go after God. I, I recognized that there were blockages in my spirit. There were things I, I, I needed to forgive. I needed to let go. I needed to talk about. And, and, and that led to my dealing with it in another space, you know, with counselors and that type of thing, ministers and so on. You know, but what I'm saying is that many of the things that happen to us, they remain hidden. And if we are really going to get the freedom that we need to get in our relationships to experience true intimacy, then we have to tell. That's right. We have to tell. But it shouldn't be by compulsion. It shouldn't be that you feel forced to tell. You should tell it, you know, out of, you know, your love. Yeah. And your, the fact that you, the two of you are connected. Yeah. The two of you are best friends. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't want to, to hide anything from your best friend. Now, if you feel you're not sure, and there's a lack of trust, well, I don't, don't say anything, please. You know, you don't want to tell something that your partner then is going to take in the wrong way and then it's going to cause problems in the relationship. But the relationship should be in a space yeah, where there is the freedom yeah. that you can tell. That's, yeah. how I, that's how I see it, mm -hmm. right? They should have that freedom that you can tell because I believe that is what is going to bring the two of you closer together and that's what is going to enhance your sexual relationship. The fact that there's freedom and that there are no secrets, right? Because secrets are the enemy to intimacy. We've been talking about the issues. <laughs> Going to be wrapping up at the top of the hour so we have 15 more minutes yeah. and um we want to yeah sorry about that we had a little break because i had a, a, a an incoming call i forgot to mute my phone so um we're going to be wrapping up in the next 15 minutes so sorry about that yeah um <laughs> um we are going to be wrapping up. We're going to be looking now at the joys. We look at some of the, we look at the essence. We looked at the issues, at least some of the issues. And now we're going to be looking at the joys of intimacy uncovered. Mm -hmm. What happens to a relationship because of intimate connection? What, how does that benefit a marriage, Gabriel? From the perspective of a man, how does this benefit your relationship when there is intimacy in that marriage. There's so many different things to, to talk about. Firstly, I, I must say that intimacy in a marriage, it brings the glue 
that would make that marriage bloom. That's right. Uh, and, and it cements the marriage. It, mm -hmm. it, it, it gives life to the, to, relationship. To the relationship. That's right. It, 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 it makes you feel free. Mm -hmm. you know? it, 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 it helps you to navigate things that, that you would have um, kept within and you didn't want to bring out to you. You were not able to, to do that. Actually, it is said, it is said that a way to a man's heart is by giving him food, but I, 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 I don't believe that. If you want a man to talk, you know, just introduce him to the garden. And I believe he's going to talk even more. Or right, we don't want to be euphemistic. We want people to understand. We're talking about sex, <laughs> we were, right? We're talking about the garden, right? The garden right. means sex. Yes. The garden means the vagina. Yes. Okay, so we don't want to we don't want to pull punches here. <laughs> we were reading from the Song of Solomon yeah, and when he said <laughs> when he said the garden, the pledges of the garden, right? That's what she said. Yes, that's right? What she said. Awake and come and blow upon my garden that the spices thereof may flow out. Let my beloved come into his garden and eat from, from his pleasant fruit. Right? So but, that but, garden is the vagina. Okay? And but, you must welcome your husband into your garden, ladies. But, but, <laughs> but again, again, there, there's that joy. There is that joy. There is that, that, that feeling of, 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 of um, being able to feel as though, hey, my wife really loves me and my spouse loves me. You know, I can, I can enrapture myself into it. All right, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm not going to beat about the bush. What does sex mean to a man? It means everything to a man. Actually, let, let, let me just say this. If a man has a headache and he comes to the bedroom with a headache or comes to his wife with a headache, immediately, if they're going to the sex, he forgets about the headache. Okay, so see, ladies... We, we, you, we would say we can't have sex because, because our head is hurting. But not men. But a man wants to have sex because his head is hurting. <laughs> 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 and he hopes that he had it will stop. <gasps> right? Um, there is this um, person, this uh, Douglas Rosano, a theologian and a sex therapist, who said sex is 80% imagination and mind and 20% friction. Wow. Sex is 80% imagination and mind and 20% friction. What he's in essence saying, and this to me is one of the joys of intimacy having been established, is that once there's intimacy established in that marriage relationship, it is like no holes barred. Y'all mm. can get as imaginative and as creative as the two of you want to be. You know, you don't have to be stuck in the missionary position. You don't have to think that that's the only position you can have sex in. You don't have to think, oh, I'm a Christian. That's all I can do. No, no ladies, no gents. You can explore each other. You can, you can have many positions in one night. You can stick to one position and if that's man, what you the, prefer. The man will move the world to please you. You can do whatever the two of you agree with. You're not to force anything on your partner that would make them feel uncomfortable. But certainly, um, you are bringing a sense of freshness and creativity and imagination yeah, yeah. to the relationship. And that includes um, spending quality time together, you know, um, romancing that relationship, milking that relationship, you know. Um, you're intimate. So because you're intimate, you want to be with each other. You want to spend time together. Mm -hmm. It's not a chore for the two of you to be out on a date. It's not a chore for the two of you to do some activity together whether it be a sport whether it be a recreational activity whether it be a hobby whether it be a charity or a church setting that the two of you share yeah. you know that you might worship together you might be involved in ministry you might do some act in the community together whatever it is the two of you love to be together now does that mean you don't have a life on your own and that you can't pursue other things no, no it doesn't um i believe that when two individuals in a relationship that when you go out and you do stuff so i might go and i might learn french my husband might go and he might lift weights you know we might do things that are distinctly different and what we do we add interest to ourselves i become more interesting because i can now speak french he looks even better because he's lifting weight. So when we come back together now, we have something fresh to admire each other about. Well, I, can ad I can admire him. I like, say, oh, you're looking good. My uh, stroller's looking broad. And 
you know, and he can admire something else different about me. And what we are doing in pursuing those interests, we are adding value to ourselves, and in so doing, we are adding value to the relationship. You know, so that's what that's what intimacy does. Intimacy injects and, and there, there, a whole new level in the relationship. And, and there are things that, that 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 would give different people different feelings. Okay, for me, it is amazing that if my wife and I we are going for a walk. My hole in her hand feels like, I mean, <laughs> it's so much for me to just hold her hand. Yeah. I feel so good yeah, just my to husband, do that. My husband loves to hold my you hand. Know? I love time. that. <laughs> you know, it does something to me. Uh, and I just can't understand why persons would, would walk with their spouse and they don't even want to hold hands. Hold hands. I love holding her hand. It, 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 it creates that friction to. I don't know if it's going to be preparation or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I love to hold that. Right, <laughs> you know, so it's like that intimacy is supposed to bring, to add spice yeah, to yeah, relationship, that's right? That's right? right. So now you want to do things together. You want to be in each other's space. You want to connect regularly, you know, because you share intimacy. So, I mean, intimacy is not... It is not an encroachment on the relationship. You're not being punished. You're not being, oh, I'm being forced to tell him things that I don't want to tell him. As, a, as I said earlier, because the two of you are connected and because he has been in your garden and you have given him your garden and he loves how your garden smells and you offer your garden to him because that connection is there, you know, there are no secrets. Yeah. There are no secrets, and, 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 and the intimacy is not forced. It is not seen as a punishment. You know, it is, it is almost, uh, it's, it's like a reward, you know, and you are now walking in a new space. You, you, your relationship is taken to a new level because of it. And it's not, it's not about perfection, no. all right? You're not going to reach that. This is not about perfection, and I would not want to be in a perfect relationship because it would probably be very boring, you know? We get our little spats from time to time. We get our little disagreements from time to time, you know. But, you know, they don't last very long these days because, obviously, we are older. We're more mature. It's not like when we first got married when I might have thrown a plate of macaroni at him and the macaroni slid down the wall. Yes, I did that. You know, um, it's not like that. Now, we've grown up. You know, we, we have adult children. You know, we're looking at things a little different, differently. Yeah. yeah, but we still have our disagreements from time to time. But what I can say is that the intimacy has definitely added value to our relationship. We totally enjoy each other. And that is why on Friday night, we want to invite you back into our space because we're going to be doing another date night, right? That's right. Another date night live this Friday. And, um, you know, we, we like to connect everything. We are not disconnected. We don't live disconnected lives. So what we are sharing with you tonight flows straight out of what we shared on Sunday when we shared about the Song of Solomon. We brought to you some more verses tonight from the Song of Solomon. And this is going to flow right into what we are going to share on Friday night when we are going to be celebrating each other with some wonderfully romantic music. Because um, whenever I dance with my husband, I fall in love with him all over again. Honestly, I do. When we listen to the music that we love, yeah. we, we actually share, we, we search for songs. We search for songs that are meaningful. Yeah. We look for songs that we identify with. Sometimes they take us right back to the nostalgic. 80s. Yeah. They're nostalgic because we got married in the 80s. You know, a lot of stuff happened to me in the 80s. Good stuff. You know, I got married and a whole other stuff. I had my first child, etc., etc. Lots of things happen. So we have lots of good memories about the 80s. And that's why we love 80s music so much. But we actually sit down and look for songs. And we, we, we toss out songs that wouldn't suit the values that we expose, mm -hmm. and we embrace songs that are wholesome, that are telling the story yeah. about yeah. love, mm -hmm. and that celebrate the love a man should have for a woman, you know, that a husband should have for his wife, that a wife should have for her husband. And we believe that this is a part, just a part of the ministry that God has called us to, in terms of encouraging you, mm -hmm. we have walked through our journey. It has not been easy. No. You know, we have walked through this journey. We're still walking through it. And uh, um, we believe in love. We believe in marriage. We believe what, in what God has established, what God has ordained. And we, we want you to enjoy it too. We want you to enjoy this connection and this intimacy with your partner. You know, because it is a part of what God wants us to. Yeah? 
and I have something to read for you tonight because I was reading to you from the Song of Solomon. And Dr. Anthony Cummings said earlier that he would challenge, he would challenge the women out there tonight to go and um, get their spouse and tell them something. Remember, he said that. Yes, he did. Right. So I am going to take him up on that challenge. And I am going to read for you guys before I go off tonight. A poem I wrote for my husband. Okay? It's called... How long did you write? Mm -hmm. I wrote this uh, maybe uh, two, weeks two weeks ago. Two weeks ago? Yeah. Okay. You know, this, 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 this time of lock, being locked down and quoting, during this COVID thing has really helped me to start writing again because I used to write a lot of poetry years ago. And I kind of fell off, so I've written quite a few in a short space of time recently. So I'm going to read this one, and we're going to end with this. And let this inspire you to, to write something positive. It would be great if when we connect on Friday and when we connect on Sunday, I can hear that some of you have written something really wonderful for your partner, whether you're a man or whether you're a woman, or perhaps you're not yet married, but you're anticipating a husband. Nothing wrong with writing to the husband that you're looking for here. You know, <laughs> you're really walking in faith then. Yes, so it's called Tango. And you know that a tango is a dance. I want to collide with you. Call eyes with you. Trace hot fingertips like fire on you. Whisper your name like music cascading on white crispy sand frothing and out of breath. I want to come to you, with you. In you see me exposed like you, butt naked, bare chested, bare breasted, open wide hearted, lips parted. I'm sorry, I lost my poem. Yes, I'll have to take that from the top so you get it. Let's go again. It got lost on the mouse. Tango, I want to collide with you. Call eyes with you. Trace hot fingertips like fire on you. Whisper your name like music cascading on white crispy sands, frothing and out of breath. I want to come to you, with you. In you see me exposed like you, butt naked, bare chested, bare breasted, open wide hearted, lips parted, whole soul of me stripped and sated, anointed with oil and the laying on of hands, our dance made sacred, one love, one spirit, one baptism, one rhapsody. Yes. Wow. Yes, so you heard my poem. <laughs> <laughs> you heard my poem. Yes. That is hot off the press. And a true expression of how I feel about my husband. And I encourage those of you who are listening to write something write something genuine and from the heart about your spouse let them know let him know let her know how you feel about her it's good to read it from the song of solomon you you you, you read you heard what we read tonight about the shulamite woman shulamite woman shulamite. shulamite woman and what she said to her man as she invited him to her garden i encourage you ladies find an innovative creative way to invite your spouse to your garden you can go into the bath seat yourself in a nice fragrant bubble bath put on some nice sexy lingerie spray your hair spray the bed do something to let him know that he's on your mind and gents of course husbands the same advice i give to you get creative do something to let that woman know 
that she's more than just a body to you. Yes, you want to celebrate her body. We've been talking about the beauty of sexual intimacy and, and sexual celebration. But you also want to let her know that she's more than a body to you. That you treasure her, the real her, which lives on the inside. And that you honor her. And that through the love you have for her, the two of you can be drawn closer together. And in so doing, you're being drawn closer to God. Because God works through that intimacy as well. And as we often say when we are sharing and having discussions and presenting in churches, sex is an act of worship. You know, so enjoy. Enjoy your partner. Enjoy your spouse. We hope that you enjoyed this time with us this evening. Yes, it was good being with you tonight. As we shared for our first session in this new season of Love Life, which will be coming to you from our home. So this is not just for lockdown, but we are going to be continuing this um, setting from our home for Love Life. And we are really thankful that you took the time to join us this evening. Yes. And we look forward to encouraging you to coming back with us again. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on Friday night because we're going to be doing our date night on Friday, this coming Friday at 8 p.m. And then again on Sunday as we continue to share from the Song of Solomon, mm -hmm. Sunday morning, 10.30, 10.30, inside of Missional Community. So thank you so much for joining us this evening. Have a great evening. Have a good night. Have a good night. A great Thursday. And we look forward to seeing you on Friday evening for our date night. Good night. Enjoy.